and dozens of people have been shot dead at an ambush in Papua New Guinea's remote highlands region. The victims were killed following a tribal dispute in the area. According to authorities, an influx of illegal firearms have made clashes more deadly and fueled a cycle of violence. The highlands areas has long struggled with violence, but these killings are believed to be the worst in years. Thousands of people gathered in Mexico City to protest against proposed changes to the country's electoral authority. According to Mexico City government, around 700,000 people took part in the protest, while 90,000 people turned out for the protest in the city's Zocalo Square. The opposition accuses President Andrés López Obrador of trying to weaken the National Electoral Institute, an autonomous, non-partisan body. Since the president's victory in the 2018 presidential elections, he's been pushing for reform of the National Electoral Institute, which he says will save taxpayers $150 million a year by drastically reducing the agency's staff. The rally-tagged March for Democracy comes ahead of presidential elections in June, with voters electing a new president to serve a six-year term. To the United States, where two police officers and a paramedic have been killed in a shooting at a family home in Minnesota. The gunman opened fire at his home with seven children inside after the police officer tried to negotiate with him following a domestic abuse call. The gunman also died in the incident, while the dead officers were named as Paul M. Strand and Matthew Rouge, both 27 years old, and the paramedic Adam Finseth was 40 years old. A governor of Minnesota, Tim Walz, described the incident as a tragic loss for the state. Coming up on The Well Today. Well, former U.S. President Donald Trump is roasted for launching a $399 sneaker just a day after receiving a $355 million fine. Stay with us. Welcome back. At least 15 people have been killed by armed rebels in the Eastern Democratic Republic of Congo's troubled Ituri province. Local sources say the cooperative for the development of the Congo, Kodeko, a militia which claims to defend the interests of the Lendu ethnic group, again targeted people from the rival Hema tribe. According to officials, Kodeko fighters ambushed users of a road near the village of Tali, where they stopped 15 people, including one woman, on Saturday afternoon. The militiamen tied them up and under undressed them before killing them, while some victims had their throats slit. Others were shot dead. According to a humanitarian source, the bodies of the victims bear the marks of torture. Territory Administrator Rufin Mapela confirmed the toll of 15, and said the attack comes months after peace. Here in Nigeria, residents of Ibadan, the oil state capital in the southwest, have joined the protest against the current economic hardship experienced across the country. Many of them mapped at least three convergent points at Iwo Road, Songo and Mokola. They were seen carrying placards with different inscriptions depicting the depth of their agitations. Our correspondent, Bokola Oriowo, reports. <laughs> The harsh economic realities across Nigeria has led to protests in parts of the country to register the grievances of Nigerians who are struggling to survive. Latest entrants in this set of protests are residents of the State capital in a peaceful protest carrying placards and chanting songs to register their displeasure at government actions and inaction. The procession which assembled at Mokola moved to Sango, Bodija Market and parts of Agudi. They are calling on the government to, as a matter of urgency, do something to ameliorate the hard economic realities being faced by many Nigerians who could barely feed. The protesters were joined by some traders at the Bodija Market showing solidarity to their cause. 
People are hungry. People are dying daily of hunger. Insecurity is killing people. We just need them to help us. They should just help us. They just look into our case and be of help to Nigerians. That's just all we need. Section 34, 39 and 40 empowers every Nigerians to organize a peaceful assembly and to speak about the economic hardship. On this note, this is not today's own. We are starting. This is just the start. It is a continuous action. Expect protest from any angle. It must not be me. It can be you. It is everybody. Because the problem does only affect only me. Neither I. It affects everyone. Security was beefed up across strategic points in the state capital to ensure that the protest is not hijacked by hoodlums. We understand that uh, people have rights uh, for uh, this kind of thing, but it is our duty as law enforcement to ensure that it is not hijacked by unscrupulous and mischievous um, elements who might want to make uh, criminal proceeds from uh, this kind of situation. As you can see uh, from Mokola, which was the starting point of uh, uh, this movement, uh, the police has covered, I mean, by foot and, you know, even with vehicles, you know, uh, following them step by step. Um, the command uh, would like to let the good people of Oyo State know, particularly residents, that we have their interest at heart and we will do all that it takes to ensure that the relative peace and tranquility in Oyo State remains as it is. <laughs> Similar protests held at Songo and New World areas within the Badodio state capital. They hope that the government would consider this protest and do something to reduce the suffering of Nigerian masses. Bukola Uriwu, Channel's Television News. In other parts of Africa, the head of uh, AU peacekeeping, Jean-Pierre Lacroix, is in South Sudan to assess uh, progress made on the peace process and preparations underway for upcoming elections scheduled for December. That will be the first for the country since its independence. Now in Juba, the South Sudanese capital, he is expected to hold meetings with leaders of the transitional government of national unity civil society representatives and other key stakeholders involved in the peace process. Mr. Lacroix is accompanied by Hannah Sewa Tete, the special envoy of the Secretary General for the Horn of Africa, meeting with the head of the UN mission in South Sudan, Nicholas Hazel. This is an important time for South Sudan. Uh, there are uh, challenges, there are also expectations in, uh, on many fronts and uh, uh, I think uh, it's also an expression of solidarity uh, from the UN as a whole. It's clear that the region is facing many challenges um, and of course the uh, uh, hostilities in uh, Sudan uh, are having an impact on, on South Sudan itself. Uh, I think there are other challenges. You mentioned ABA. Um, I believe that uh, uh, other phenomena such as the impact of climate change is all, uh, are also affecting uh, this country. and. Uh, they have an impact on the on the situation of the uh, civilian population. This is an opportunity for the Under Secretary General for Peacekeeping Operations to see one of his bigger and more effective missions for us to introduce him to the challenges we face and the difficulties and, and how we are doing to overcome what we are doing to overcome those. Um, but it's also uh, he also has an interest in ABA and the conflict in uh, Warup uh, between the Twitch and the Nok. And we'll hear more from Mr. Haysom saying his agenda in the country is to urge all leaders to fulfill their citizens' expectations by holding timely elections and completing the young nation's much-delayed democratic transition. The special representative of the Secretary General for South Sudan and head of the UN mission was speaking to reporters during a press briefing in Juba. Unmiss's view has always been that elections can be held in December, but only if the country's leaders take urgent action to overcome key obstacles. Decisions are needed on the type of elections to be held. Consensus must be reached on a realistic electoral calendar, taking into account operational, logistical, legal and security issues. Transitional security arrangements must be finalized, an electoral security plan must be agreed, and the necessary unified forces deployed to provide a secure env environment. 
Intervention is needed at the highest level to resolve tensions in northern unity between the SSPDF and the SPLAIO, as well as the intercommunal violence in pockets of the country and in the fragile interface between Dinka, Twitch, Noktinka and newer communities in Warup and Abia. This conflict is causing real harm to communities as well as inhibiting an environment of open political competition, which would be a vital part of a healthy democracy. It also highlights the grave danger of multiple armies occupying the same geographic space and places a premium on the need to fully implement transitional security arrangements here in South Sudan. And this is why UNMIS is actively assisting the Joint Defence Board by providing logistical support, transport of officials to training centres and assisting with security sector reform wherever asked. And as we end the program, how much are you willing to pay for a pair of sneakers? And let me be specific, a pair of Trump sneakers. Former U.S. President Donald Trump launched his own line of Trump-branded footwear at an event in Philadelphia tagged the greatest sneaker show on earth. The shiny gold high sneakers has the American flag on the back and a T badge in front selling at $399. Crowds erupted into a chorus of boos and cheers as Trump got on stage, saying there's a lot of emotion in this room, before holding up the eccentric shoe and adding, this is something that I've been talking about for 12 years, 13 years, and I think it's going to be a big success. A launch comes after a judge ordered the former president to pay nearly $355 million to New York State for lying about the values of his properties. Wow, rich and awful interested enough to buy a pair. I gave you time to think about that. Thanks for watching. I'm Amarachi Ubani.